you. Should be up and going. Friends from around the fire media? That's not it. Nope. Just around the fire media. I'll check my subscriptions then. It looks like we are live. That's good. And audio is coming in. Video looks fine. Cool. That'll work. So now the question is, is can I pull up YouTube on my side monitor to monitor to watch the chat too? There we go. Boom. Ah, there it is. That doesn't look too bad. All right, I'm going to go share this on Facebook. Oh, appreciate it. Well, I'm trying not to share anything this um, weekend. Somebody was very negative about my sharing, so I was like, okay, fine. <laughs> I'm going to be completely silent to everybody this whole weekend. Enjoy your sad lives without <laughs> my memes. <laughs> All right, so I'm good there. Good there. It looks like we're all good to go. We'll give it just a few minutes and then we'll jump into it. Is there a delay going? I can't tell. Um, it's a couple of seconds, but it's not bad. At least on my end. Okay. start there and then i'm playing around too with uh taking live streams like this and turning them into uh videos afterwards so i'll give a little uh video intro so i can just cut it later uh another channel does that they they'll do like a it winds up being like a four-hour podcast that they end up cutting down to mm -hmm. only an hour like uh the lore lodge they do a whole bunch of i gotcha <laughs> cryptids and weird uh, <laughs> mysteries. I don't know, some of it's educational. They just released one on the the Pinguski experiment. Uh -huh. The one where they gave those people syphilis. Yep. yep. Right. So downsides to owning a three D printer. Okay. Everybody and their brother <laughs> says, hey, can you print this? Hey, yeah. can you print this? Want you to do stuff? Yeah. Which I don't mind, but some people it's just endless. And I'm like, I barely want to print for myself, man. <laughs> how expensive is it? To print? How expensive is it to print stuff? Uh, it depends on the thing. Like, I want to say the biggest thing we've printed wise was like $5 in resin. Oh, that's not bad. Yeah, like, the parts I make for my Titans are costing me less than a dollar, and I'm... That's pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> now, when you go and play, like, Warhammer and stuff, are are you able to use 3D printed, or do they have to be this, the specific name brand ones? So, from GW themselves, two-thirds their model has... Two-thirds the model has to be their parts. Okay. Um, they don't hold um, official... Like, what I'm printing for is AT stuff. Mm. They don't hold official tournaments for that. I, their big ones are Age of Sigmar and Warhammer 40,000. 40, so gotcha. I can have an entirely 3D printed piece, and nobody will say nothing to me other than, oh, that's really cool. <laughs> that's neat. Yeah. <laughs> Plus, they just released Legion Imperialis, which... Um, is taking 40 K and then shrinking it down to eight millimeter. So my game's probably going to be dead pretty soon. Gotcha. Ooh, look at her fate. Found it. We're 50% of the way there on the cards we need. Oh, 
network. I dropped the Discord in the YouTube chat, so let's see if anyone takes us up on that. Do they take the bait? <laughs> Uh, this one's from Keladesh. I don't have a lot of cards from Keladesh. I wasn't playing during that time. That uh, that kid who I was talking about who plays Magic, I was he was asking me what my favorite decks of all time were, and I was talking about Naya and Eldrazi, and then and he he was like, "Oh, those sound terrible." <laughs> I'm like, "They were fun." I'm actually building Naya right now. I'm doing dinosaurs. Nice. I would do Beast because that's the original Naya thing, but, like, I don't think there's any good big Beast commander that's Naya colors. Mm. If Godsire's, a, if Godsire's not there, I don't want it. Uh, I want, like, Godsire's cool, but, I mean, he doesn't have any protection anymore. Mm. Like, and he's not legendary, so I can't even use him as a commander to recast him if he gets uh, killed. Uh-oh. What's this? Cool. RJ. Okay, so I got RJ to go out to Griffin's Perch a few weeks ago. Um, he got re along really well with Donnie. Nice. He's met Dave before. Um, he he bought more garb. Nice. So. Cool. I'd love to see him come back out and play some more. That'd be great. As, as I keep tell, telling him, he's like, I don't know where I'd go or anything. You're going to hang out at FC camp. <laughs> You're just going to camp by us. That's how it works. Yep. And if anyone says anything, I'm going to put point around to all the tag-along girlfriends and everything. RJ can hang out. So R RJ's your tag-along girlfriend? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone else gets to have one. Why can't I? No, it'd be cool if he comes back out. I miss that oh, guy. Yeah. I miss that guy. And he'll actually fought. He fought the whole day that we were there. Awesome. We even had him in armor. You should get him to go with you when you go to Griffin's Perch in a couple weeks. Or whenever that is. Uh, yeah, he's driving. Brownie won't drive. Like, Brownie's health is not the best. I'm I'm going to be impressed if he actually does more than just sitting in, in the chair. Mm. All right. Well, I think enough time has gone by. Um, we can go ahead and get started here. Um, everybody, thanks for tuning in. Um, feel free throughout all of this. If you have any questions, uh, type those in. Uh, I also linked in the chat, the Discord. Uh, so if you want to join in, Hearth and I are hanging out in here. Say hello, Hearth. Howdy. So if you guys want to join in the conversation, you are welcome to. Uh, the goal of this tonight is for me to uh, just kind of go through my entire process of creating battle games um, and then all the way through the finished product of producing um, like graphics for rule set stuff that you can post to your park and your kingdom beforehand. Uh, I think especially for kingdom level games, uh, one of the things that our games don't do very well at, uh, like Ampgard, Belgarth, all of this is uh, pretty much the same. Uh, the process wise is we don't publish rules early enough and we don't um, make those rules clear very often. Uh, so this is a little bit of game design theory, uh, but then also like marketing theory, um, publication theory, I guess, if you want to call it. So um, pulled up here, I've got this is kind of what we're going to end up with, uh, go through the whole process of creating the rules, creating the games um, and then making the graphics as well. Uh, so if you don't know me, or if this is your first time here, uh, my name is St. Godric. Uh, I've been playing for, Jeremy, how long have we been playing? 12 years? 15 years? Uh, 12. 12. Um, and I have been um, all over the place, played quite a bit in the Midwest, uh, a little bit down south too, and a few different kingdoms at this point. Um, I am a master smith, uh, mainly for videos like this, um, but also have a few high-level smiths for game running stuff. Um, I am a knight out of the kingdom, an amp guard out of uh, the kingdom of Winter's Edge, and then also a knight and dag and bell as well, and I've run games over there. Um, so all of this transfers across the games, uh, so you should be good to go with any of this. 
Um, so we will jump in. Uh, kind of my process starts is, let me jump over here. Um, I have a few questions that I always ask, and uh, we're gonna kind of gonna go through this scenario a little bit. And Hearth, I'll have you. Um, I'll ask questions, and you can kind of give me parameters as we go through here. Um, as like I am, you're like my autocrat at the event, if you can believe it or not. Um, oh no! <laughs> and you are giving me the scenario in which you want me to run a game. Okay, think think you can do it. Makes sense. I can try. <laughs> <laughs> cool. All right. So, Hearth, you want me to run a game for you on Saturday at the next event. How many players do you think are going to be on the field? 40. 40? Okay. Uh, what do you think is the maximum number of people? If 40 is what we think it will be, what do you think is like on the high end of how many people will be there? 60. 60? Perfect. Do you have a preference on how many teams there are in this game? Mm, let's do three. three? Cause everyone hates that. Yeah, everyone does hate that. So, uh, reason why everyone hates uh, teams of three, um, if you're new to this, game theory-wise, uh, it's okay. It's not the end of the world. Uh, but a lot of times, the team that is winning, uh, the other two teams just gang up on them. Uh, or you'll get some like pregame shenanigans where people will come in and two teams will make a, a pack to just, you know, screw over the other team. Um, but three team games can be very fun uh, if they're managed well. Um, but so we have the, the autocrat says, hey, we have a game, 40 to 60 people. I want there to be three teams. Um, and this could be for a variety of different reasons. Uh, maybe the event is running on a three-team system and there's some, that's important to the event itself. Um, could just be they just want a two-team game, a three-team game, and a six-team game. Uh, but you're given that parameter. Mr. Autocrat, what is the terrain that I am going to be working with? Am I in a flat field? Am I in a, like a wooded field? Am I in the woods itself? Uh, where would you like me to run this game? Okay. Half in the woods, half on a field. Mm, okay, I like it. Half woods, half field. Cool. So these are the baseline uh, things that will be given to you most of the time. Or if they're not given to you, you can at least ascertain before you make a game. Um, it is good to know your field, know how many people, and then know the number of teams. So, excuse me, um, from here... Uh, if you guys are watching in chat, feel free to drop any questions that you have below. Uh, if you have any ideas or suggestions, uh, feel free to drop those. And we will go through them here. So, um, a easy way that I like to do my games is to take a game that the majority of the players on the field will know and then alter it a little bit. And what I mean by that... If you go out in any field and you say, we're playing team deathmatch, everybody knows what that means. If you say we're playing capture the flag, everybody knows what that means. If you say we're playing king of the hill, everybody knows what that means. Um, move the payload has become popular recently with games like Overwatch and different things like that. Um, everybody knows what those mean. And so it is game mechanics and game modes that people are familiar with are generally where I like to start. Um, and sometimes... That's all you need, right? If you have a, a game of 15 people, 18 people, capture the flag might be all you need. Just a simple game, capture the flag, no big deal. Um, but other games like this, especially a three-team game, um, capture the flag could work, potentially. Um, but then one team might have an advantage because they're in the woods and one team might not. So then you got to take that into consideration. Um, but what I like to do is start with my base game and then build out from there. So what I mean by that is if I'm going to do team deathmatch, everyone understands that, three bases, we're going to make our rules, and then we let people go. And then from there, you can add unique game mechanics. Uh, you got to be careful with unique game mechanics. Uh, Hearth, how many, what do you think is the max unique mechanics that you like to see in any given game? I want to say four tops because you four. get any higher than that people start getting it, 
forgetting things real easy. Yeah, absolutely. And unique game mechanics might be collect the object and move it to the basket. Once you place the item in the basket, that's one mechanic. You have to then take a part that you get to another area of the field and do something else with it. Uh, these could be unique respawn mechanics. These could be uh, you have to collect five, I don't know, you know, five sticks of dynamite to do this thing before you can do that thing. And, and then it starts to get into this big like snowball effect. Um, four is on the high end what I like to do. I think every game needs at least one uh, to be memorable uh, at a kingdom level. Um, but if you, like Heard said, if you get much up over four game mechanics that are odd, people are not going to be able to keep track of what's going on. Uh, most of the time, in my experience, the most fun games have been the simplest games that are just tweaked uh, to be able to, you know, alter a little bit to make the game fun. Uh, when I look back on my favorite games that I've ever played, um, probably four out of my top five are just simple games from my favorite video games that we have then just adapted into, um, excuse me, into, uh, Amp Guard, Dagger Here, Bella Garth, uh, those type of things. Um, so let's see what base game do we want to start with for a three team game? Capture the flag. I don't know if I would want that. Node capture is a simple one. We could do node capture. We that node capture also plays on that there's three teams. One would probably get ganged up on, and if they're on the node, they're getting ganged up anyway. Mm -hmm. So I like node capture, but what do you think? So like for the unique factor, what if like each team has a node that is in their territory, but then, and that was, those score like one point each but then the node in the center scores three points or something like that. Um, so we could, I could see, I could see that working. Um, mm -hmm. Or, or because we're half wooded, half field, we could have all the teams start in the field and their individual nodes are in the field, but then the big bad node is in the woods. And so you're going to be fighting in the woods to be able, I could see that work. Um, Kyle Nelson going full class, right? Uh, that's up to you. Uh, for this example, we probably will because I'm assuming the majority of uh, my viewers here are going to be amp guarders, so we will be playing full class. Uh, but you could pretty easily do this with Militia or you could do this with Dagger here or Bellagarth or heck, even SCA if you wanted to. Uh, most of the battle game style, battle arena type of games this could work with. Um, but we will be assuming as we get into the rules here in a minute um, that we will, uh, that's what we will be operating under. So what I'm going to do, um, I'm going to go over here to Canva and we'll start this process now. So what I'm, I'm doing, um, I'm in Canva. This is a free tool. Um, there is a paid version if you want to use it, uh, but the free version will do most of what you need it to do. Um, what I did is I just went over here to create a design and I went to custom size. Um, and so I'm going to type in 1920 by 1080, which is just the normal size that I use. And you get this blank, um, page here. What I'm going to do, what I always start with is over here on the left where it says elements. And then I'm going to go in and type scroll and it just pulls up a, or maybe like old paper. Yeah, there we go. Um, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this graphic and I'm going to drop it on my thing here. I'm going to make it larger and make that my background. That just adds a little bit of, I don't know, it makes it unique, right? Like you're not just on a, a white document on Word or whatever. So what we need to do first up is we need to look for something to represent the forest that we're going to be fighting in. Let's see. We can put a bear in the woods. <laughs> um, we'll do these trees. This will work fine. So what I'm going to do, um, I'm making this field completely up as we go. Um, but you, if you know it, uh, you can also come in here sometimes and make, uh, like take a map out of uh, Alpha Google and specifically make your terrain how you want it to. Um, but I am just pretty quickly throwing in a few different trees here to give it some variety. 
to show that this half of the map is going to be wooded. And what I did is I just selected two of them, I brought them over. Once you select the thing that you want to uh, do, I was just hitting Control C, which is Control Copy, and Control V, which is Paste. And then I just kind of set them randomly just to represent that these are the woods that we are going to be playing in. So from here, uh, we need something to represent the nodes. Um, this could be, what are some easy ways that would be three team nodes that you think could, uh, you could do like the, just the normal flagpole with three different flags on it. You could do, um, any sort of mechanic where you like you you are actually flipping it so like there are three different colors one for each team and whichever color is up on whatever device that you want to make that's the team that is scoring that node um, those are generally the way that most of these works um, but for the for this game uh, we are going to go in and make three separate well four I guess flags and these are going to represent each team's node. And then we're going to put the fourth flag over here in the woods. And we're going to make that one bigger because that one's worth more points. We'll change that one to orange. And we'll leave the other three black for the time being. Okay. Anything else that you can think of, Hearth, geographically that our map needs? Like what? At the event site. Anything else I need? Are there any paths or anything like that? I don't know. It's a amp guard field, right? There's going to be holes in that field. Uh, yeah, there will be <laughs> holes. I don't know if we can map out holes. Um, cancel that. I don't know if I like any of these. Um, yeah, something like this, right? If they're like, say your game, um, say you have um, like a line where you want people to spawn behind, you can go in and drop this stuff in. Um, you could go in and do, if you want to do like, bucket like scoring buckets right you could go in and put those little things in here and do this is where the bucket and you got to get the balls that are going to be in the middle and get them over to the bucket um, you can do all sorts of different things like that um, I don't think we inherently need to do that too much here um, but what I would do is I would go in and I would add in some circles and this is just preemptive. We'll get into the rules of what these circles will do here in a little bit. Um, but these are going to be like the team spawns. So we'll go ahead and set them off over here. And then we'll make each one of these a different color. Uh, let's make it like green. There we go. Cool. So this is the field that we are working on. Uh, we have a half wooded half, um, we'll put these over here in the middle, half wooded, half open field, which is a fun uh, area. This has been given to us by the Monarch. Um, let's see, I've only used Canva on mobile, looks so much easier on the computer. 100% uh, Robert, <laughs> like incredibly, incredibly easier. Uh, I have access, I do a lot of my, uh, a lot of Adobe work for work for my like career. And I have found myself using Canva probably 50% of the time, even though I have access to Adobe, which is like the high end stuff, unless it's like a super technical thing. Canva is just way easier. And they have this giant library over here of just things to pick from, uh, which is super, super helpful. So I love Canva. It is fantastic. Um, so from here, uh, we have an open field. We have our teams and then we have our field. That gives us a visual. So now we can come back over here to our rules and we can start to make some different um, rules that we want and make the game unique. So I am thinking for the nodes, uh, the field nodes score one point, the woods node Scores, what do you think? Her three points? Five points? Three? Uh, it, it's got to be three or four because you kind of want them to go after that node and not just hog That's all true. three to get points. That's true. We might do five then and make it 
make it uh make it actually like you want to encourage that is a good point you want to encourage them to go fight over that thing okay so what we'll do then is nodes are scored call it every two minutes sounds good i like that well the time should definitely be relation to how quick you let people spawn mm -hmm. and considering our spell ball time limits 100 percent, i agree uh, and we'll get into the those kind of the nitty gritty mechanics here just a little bit further down. Um, the game will last, we'll call it half hour, okay. with nodes being scored every two minutes. I like that. Um, like what you said, uh, respawn. I can never spell this word right. Did I get it? Uh, what do you think? Every thirty seconds, sixty seconds are generally your your norms. We'll do uh, I there's got to be some in between because of oh, that's nitty gritty stuff though. Yeah. Well, no, no, that's fine. We can go and do this here. So I generally for kingdom level games will do 60 second respawn. If you can start counting from where you die or I'll do a 30 second respawn from when you get back to your respawn. I think either work fairly well. Um, we'll do, we'll just call it 60 seconds. Or we'll just do 30 seconds, respawn count of 30 at base. And what that means is when you die, you you walk back to your respawn point, which we'll put on the maps. And then from there, you count the 30. And then after 30 seconds, you can, um, you can jump in. I think that that will work well. Okay. Other rules that would be important here, I would say uh, taking your own life or the life of an ally uh, does not replenish per lives, per life spells. Uh, this is a specifically amp guard rule. I think it's silly sometimes if someone's going to take a, a death um, to be able to get out of a crowd control spell, they should not get their per live spells and abilities back in my opinion so that is just a rule that i put in on every single game that i make if you take your own life or the life Hard of to it enforce, though. um it is but most of the time when you tell people that again it's a game of honor i'm expecting people to play by the rules um if they aren't that's a a reaving issue and a player issue um, which we can get into i guess but I just assume most players are going to play um, play the game I present to them and play it the way that I want them to play it, if that makes sense. So other things to consider, uh, if this had walls and bridges and stuff, um, you would want to put rules in around teleporting and insubstantial and can I get shoved over the wall, can I get thrown over the wall, all of those type of rules, I generally like to outline before the game begins. Um, for this one, because it's pretty open, I don't think we have to worry about it too much. Um, it shouldn't be too big of a deal. Let me go back over here. All right, what other nitty gritty rules am I forgetting, Hearth? Those are the basics, right? Yeah. Because spawn usually affects people like, oh, that that makes my snow or, you know, ice ball useless or mm -hmm. my, what's the point of my using shake it off? In this game, we're going to assume is a fairly large field because we're playing with 40 to 60 people. Uh, so when you die, right, you probably take 15 seconds to walk back to base and then you start counting at 30. Um, I think I wouldn't be frustrated as an ice ball user if someone took a death from that and walked back. That's 45 seconds and they don't get their spells back. I think I that that's one. go ahead. So what about people that have to retrieve their stuff? Mm. Not, they would be penalized because they have to retrieve their stuff and then start counting. Correct. Uh, that is the negative of doing an at base count in something that, uh, your kingdom will probably have a culture of. Um, some kingdoms will allow people like archers to go collect arrows when they're dead and that still counts or assassins can go get throwies. Uh, casters can get spell balls. 
Uh, if you do a respawn count of 60 from death, that lets those people go and do that. Uh, that is something that you do have to take into consideration when you're making these games. Um, I'm okay with respawn count at 30 at base, and then this would be one of those things that I might make an adjustment for in the middle of the game if it becomes an issue. Um, but I don't think that it... In a, in a non-hyper-competitive game, I don't think that that is too big of a deal, if that makes sense. That makes sense. Because there, there are going to be some games, right, that are going to be super competitive. It's my company versus your company. Those rules, I want to make sure that they are completely ironed out and that there are no you know, loopholes. There's nothing in that. Um, those games, like your Battlemaster tournaments, Bridge Wars, like those type of games, need to make sure that you're really, really careful in your rules in those type of games. In a general kingdom level game, you don't have to worry about it as much. You want it to be fair. Um, but things like that, I generally don't worry too terribly much about unless it is a hyper competitive thing okay so from here what else let me go back here um other rules that i would potentially need um i would probably say nodes count as game items uh, the reason you put that rule in there is uh, that means people cannot do certain spells around game items. Uh, you can't, like, come out of insubstantial for 95% of cases, for instance. Um, there are certain, like, you can't do Heart of the Swarm next to a game item, uh, those type of things. So I like to put that rule in there, too, just so that clarifies. And I do that with almost any of my unique game factors. Um, or unique factors, no matter what it is, whether it's a flag, a node, a uh, king of the hill, I mean, whatever. I, I think it's silly when that rule isn't in there. Okay. Any other rules you can think of, Hearth? No, that covers all of them. I was just musing, though. I remember when we first started, you know, V8, and nobody wanted to take heart of the swarm. <laughs> Very few... Very, I don't see very many people doing it even now. Um, just in very niche comps, it can work sometimes. I don't think it's as good as like a bard healer combo in the back, personally. Um, but it's in the rule book, so we got to account for it. Um, it is what it is. I don't think it's great, but there are some people who really enjoy it, so it's oh, there. Yeah. All right. So uh, this would be my game for the most part um, I would want to at this point go and test this if I can um, if I'm in charge of a kingdom level game if I have the opportunity to I want to go to a large park and test it I want to um, maybe do a like invite three or four parks to come to my park or we're going to travel to the duchy and do it if you're a part of a grand duchy system like what the rising winds has you can go and do it at a grand duchy event um, it is difficult sometimes when you start talking Ooh. about 40 to 60 players in a game uh, to be able to test like there are going to be unforeseen circumstances um, that you don't think about um, that won't show up if you're testing it at your park of like eight or 10 or 12 people. Um, so if you can, and you're running this at a kingdom level, I would always like to, um, go through and check it. Um, at this point you could also put how many reeves do you think you need? Um, for this one, I would want one for each node plus probably two field reeves. So I'd say six to eight would be ideal for this. So that means I, if I'm at, again at kingdom, I can go ahead and start, um, keeping up with all of this. And when I say Reeves slash bean counters too. Um, so that way you can keep track of everything. Um, mm, I guess this, how to win. Who keeps jumping in? Hello, hello. I can hear you now. Okay, cool. I wonder if my internet dropped. Oh, well. Um, so, how to win. You have the most points at the end of the game. Pretty simple, but 
important to, to lay out there. Um, so nodes, field nodes are going to be one point. Woods nodes going to be five points. Nodes are going to be scored every two minutes. Did I put that down? Yes. Nodes are scored every two minutes. Whoever has, whichever team has the most points at the end of the game wins. Respawn count of 30 starting at base. If you take your own life or the life of an ally, this is like if you kill your barbarian, for instance, so he can fight after death, you do not get your spells back. Um, should be good to go. All right, so now what I do at this point, um, I'm going to highlight all of this stuff, and I'm going to make it smaller. Now, what I'm going to try and do is you can play around with this and center it in the middle. Sometimes you can put off to the edges. It's, we're going to try and get some rules in here. So that way, I probably need to make it a little bit smaller. So that way, when I go to post this on my Kingdom Facebook page, it is good to go and everyone can see it and get an idea of what we're doing. So I'm going to go over here in Canva on text. I'm going to add a title and I'm going to drop it up here, make it a lot bigger. And then do we, let's see, what could be a creative name for this? We'll call it... Hmm. Woods. I'm not creative with my names. That's the worst part. Neither mm. am I. You, I all, most of my D&D characters were named Bob. Bob. That's classic. <laughs> Let's go. Um, Battle of the Woods. That's fine. That will work for our purposes today. Okay, I'm going to make that a little smaller. You can go in and change and make this cr more creative at the end. Generally, I try and get all my text on the page first, um, and then I am good to go from there. So then I'm going to come in here, and I'm going to make a one. Copy, paste, come down here, make a two. Paste, oh. Paste again come down here and make a three. So this is going to be the spawn places for each of these teams. Uh, what I would do as the game runner, um, I would make sure, just measure these out. I would set my nodes first and then I would measure off. Just make sure that the distance in between the closest node is the same um, for each one. You could, if you want to, uh, you can come in here and look for a line and throw in something like this down here at the bottom. Um, this is like the line for scale type of thing, right? So like if if you know how long this is, um, you could come down here and put like, you know, 400 feet or something, right? Um, <laughs> in, most, in most games, I don't do this. Um, only time I really do this is for like, again, the hyper competitive games for like Bridge Wars. Because I need to know if the bridge that I'm fighting on is 100 foot long compared to 50 foot long. Because that changes my spell list. That changes pretty much everything that I do um, is going to be based on the field itself. So like for this one here, this game here, this King of the Hill, I did put 150 feet long. Um, so essentially what that meant was from this point to this point was 50 feet. So if you're inside this box, any 50-foot spell or most extended spells would hit you. Um, and those are good for just like being able to count off in competitive environments. Um, I didn't put one on this side, on this game. It just kind of depends. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. Um, let's go back to here. So then what I would do is I come in. I'm copy pasting another one of these. I want to make this font significantly smaller for this. We'll call it 36 to start with. It needs, it'll need to be smaller than that, but we'll make it work. And I'm just gonna make a spot for rules. And you can kind of see what I did over here on this one. Um, I'm actually just gonna copy this one because <laughs> uh, I'm lazy and paste it. Um, let's do this. 
Let's move all this stuff over. And in your rules, what you're going to do is all of the things that we had just listed out a little bit ago um, on the page, this is what you're going to put in here. So for this one, we have 30 seconds starting on death. We're going to change that to at spawn. Um, stepping off the path doesn't matter for this game. Shoves don't matter for this game. Uh, take, taking your life results in being cursed and does not return per life spells or abilities. That does count. We don't have heavy objects, so we don't need that. We don't need that. So now here, those are your game rules. These are going to be your game specific rules. Then what I'll do is I'll copy paste and I'll come down here and I'm going to put nodes and then I'm going to explain all the rules for the nodes. So black flags. Now let's do this. All nodes are scored every two minutes minutes then we'll do black flags are worth one point um, something that you'll want to do this is just me being nitpicky uh, if you use a period at the end of one just go through and make sure you use a period at the end of all the of them uh, you don't have to use a period but if you don't use it for one don't use it for all of them um, essentially Orange flag is worth five points. Okay. And then I would come in here and do, um, I guess it would be under rules, wouldn't it? We'll do 30 minute long game period. All right. So now I'm going to go back and look at my notes and see if there's anything else that I need to add. So we've got the nodes in there. Ah, nodes count as game items. That's why we go back and check. Nodes count as game items, period. Let's go back and look how to win. Um, let me put that here team with the most points <laughs> wins what you misspelled spawn oh did i there we go um i know i'm being nitpicky but you misspelled spawn in the rules i appreciate it highland i am a notoriously bad speller so feel free point any of that stuff out on any of my stuff if you ever see it Okay, let's go back here and look. Nodes are scored every two minutes. We got that. Game will go for half an hour. We got that. Respawn at base or 30 seconds. We got that. Taking your own life. We've got that. All right, so what I'll do now, this is all of the information that I need. And so what I'll do now, um, sometimes down here at the bottom, I would go in and explain what one, two, and three are if these things are somewhat um, confusing. So like over here, um, I put score point and heavy object. How this game works is there, there was going to be a hula hoop on the ground that was like staked into the ground. And then the heavy object was like a literal 50 pound bag of sand. You had to get both or you had to get the other team's bag of sand or you had to get your bag of sand to the other team's score point to win. All of that was explained in the rules, but then I also explained, gave a little legend over here for what they were. Um, over on this one, I didn't need that because it was just a flag, so um, that was okay. On the one we're doing, I don't really need that because these are just team spawns. I mean, I guess I could do something like this if I really wanted to. Team one. Did I spell it right? <laughs> um, let's make that a little smaller. And just like drop it there. So we can do something like that. Copy paste. 
to paste three. Okay, so you can do something like that if you want to. Um, you could also down here in the bottom, you could add those things um, there. So now if I have all of the rules done and I'm happy with the way this looks, um, what I'll do now is go through and just make it look pretty. Because again, I'm going to be posting this on social media. I want people to be able to share this and get excited about it. So what I'm doing is I'm making the rules a little bit bigger, spacing them out a little bit. Um, one of the cool things that you can do in Canva is if you click on something and then shift click on another, it will select both of them. And then um, if you come up here, oh, why are you doing this to me? Oh, because they're already even. Uh, let's do it with this. Okay, so I have both the orange circle and team one spawn highlighted. If you come over here to this position and then click center, it will make sure that those things are centered with each other. And it's all of the things that you have. Um, oh, come on. Why is it doing that to me? All the things that you have selected at that moment are going to be centered which is super helpful when you're trying to make everything look better. This one's already centered. This one is not, I know it's not centered. Cool. So now if you look, teams three is shifted off to the left from the other two and that bothers me. So I'm gonna select team three spawn and blue and then right here where it says group, I'm gonna click on that. And what that does is those two things are now one item. And anytime I move it, it moves equally with the other ones or with the same one. So now I'm going to go here and do that uh, shift click on the text and shift click on green. I'm going to click group. I'm going to shift click on team one, and shift click on orange and group. So now each spawn moves independently with its text, which is super helpful. And then what I'm going to do is I'm gonna shift click on each of those three groups and then I'm gonna go position up here and I'm gonna click center. Now this is very similar to like Word and anything else that you've done. Um, it will align them. I can align them to the left if I want. It doesn't really matter, but I'm gonna go center and then I'm going to group all of those together now. So now I just have one big group that has all of those pieces of text and the circles together. And anytime I move one, they're all going to move together. Super helpful in Canva when you're trying to do things like this. Um, you, if you want to ungroup it because you made a mistake or whatever, um, you can just click right here and go ungroup. So I'm now going to position that to make sure it's where I want it to be. I'm going to move this line so it's even in the center and then move it to where it's actually let's do this. Yeah, it's the woods. It doesn't, I was sorry. I guess I should say what I'm thinking. Um, I was going to make all of the trees be aligned on the right side right here, but then I thought, no, I'm not going to do that because it's a woods and they're not perfectly centered and they're trees. So they're not going to be exactly where they need to be. Oh, can you hear me, Jeremy? I can hear you. Okay, cool. My uh, Canva freaked out on me, so I didn't know if I lost it, if I lost everybody or not. Nope, all good. Cool. So now I made my line pretty even with the trees. I'm going to center this 400 foot there if I need it. My nodes and my rules are good. My battle of the banner looks, or better battle of the woods looks good. I can make that a little bigger if I want. And I am good to go. So this is what I would post um, with the rules specifically to Facebook and all of those. I might move that up. You can go in and nitpick this stuff as much as you want to make it look good. Um, another thing that I would do is once I have this made, I'm gonna add page and create a separate one. So I have just a second page of this presentation. And then what I'm gonna do is kind of make a hype ad for this. And so what I'll do is I'm gonna click over here on the left in Canva where it says elements and then the search bar. 
And I'm going to search. Um, I was going to do night. I'll show you that, I guess. I can show you. So if I click on night and then I go down here to photos. I don't really care about graphics too much. And for this, I don't care about videos. So I'm going to photos and I'm going to click see all. And all of these things that are here, right? Like, uh, let's see if, what's a good one that I could use if I wanted to. Um, yeah, boom, right? So I can make this the background of my ad if I wanted to, or my like hype post. Um, it doesn't really fit with the theme of Battle of the Woods though. Um, but if this were just like a normal park day or whatever, like that could be pretty cool. This one could work too, right? Like that's not, not too bad. Um, but because we are in the woods, I'm going to look for a forest and I'm looking for something like, ooh, let's just do dark forest. See if it has any, there we go. That's not bad. I think I like that even better. What about this? Yeah, there we go. That'll work. Cool. So now I have that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back over here to my text. I'm going to click add a title. And then I'm going to make it just way big for right now. It doesn't look good because it's black on black. So I'm going to click up here to the text changer, make it white. We'll make this look better here in a little bit. So then battle for, what I call it, for the woods, of the woods. Make sure you use the same language. Okay. I want to make it smaller um, lettering because I want the words to take up the whole screen here. So I'm just going to hold this down. I think that looks good. Something like that. Cool. So then what I'm going to do if once you click on your text here, if you go up in Canva to this where it says effects, I'm going to click on that. And then there are a few different things you can do. The main one that I like right here is outline. I'm going to click on that. And if you can see, it outlined all of the words in a particular, and you can pick any color you want. Um, you can kind of play around with what's going to look good. I kind of like that blue just because the, the overall thing was like the mood of the photo is blue. Um, if I really wanted to, I could probably do green. We'll play around. We'll get to it. Okay. But so, blue and green. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I've got Battle of the Woods with the blue outline on the white text. I think that looks pretty good. But then what I'm going to do is I'm going to click over here and click Add Subtitle. And I have just a cursive font here. You can go in and pick whatever color font you want or any one that you like. And then I'm going to put the date. We'll call this, you know, February 2nd, um, 2019. I don't know what else, what other details would I want. Um, at 2 p.m. And then I might put the, the address, right? And eh, maybe not for this one. I, I probably wouldn't. I'm going to go do the same thing where I click effects. I'm going to click outline. And this one I might, we'll keep it there for now. We'll keep it on the same. I'm going to end up changing that because I don't like the look of that, but. We'll, we'll get there. We're, I'll walk you through my entire process. Kaylee says no to the outline. I know Kaylee says no to the outline, uh, Riley. I disagree with her on the no outline thing. And she is the professional, so I should probably listen to her. Um, viewers, the no, person who's, the, the person who's talking to me is a professional, like graphic designer and marketing expert. Um, and she does not like outline on the words. I do. I think it pops. I think it looks good. Um, anyway, uh, I don't like this font. We'll change that in a minute. But now what I'm going to do is I'm going to click over here on elements. I'm going to go in and look for some smoke. Ooh, I wonder. Let's try it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this. And now that obviously doesn't look good. We're going to see if this will work. Canva has a really cool feature where you can pull out the background of different things. So I'm going to go to edit photo. 
if it will let me. And I'm going to click right here where it says background remover. Nah, that one won't work. Okay. Um, let's see what would work. Uh, that might work. Background remover. There we go. I don't like that. But if you, if you see where it removed most of the black outline, I don't like that one too much. Let's look for, I don't know, something like that could be cool. Background remover. I want, no, that looks bad. I want something like wispy is what I'm looking for. So maybe I should look for like mist, maybe. Nope, don't like it. Um, smoke, mist. See, because what I would love is just this smoke outline and be able to put it down here. Um, I can go in if I really want to and do this in Photoshop and pull it over. But I'm lazy and really don't want to. Um, none of those, none of those. What we could do, yeah, that looks okay. So what I'm going to do is I finally found some smoke and I just dropped it over the top of this entirely. But if you look at that, that doesn't look great. The woods are, the smoke's a little too heavy. So what I'm going to do is up here at the top, there is this little um, transparency thing. Um, no, I'm, what I'm going for, I'm not going for burning woods. I'm going for like foggy, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, spooky almost. It's like, oh no, battle of the woods. So ominous, I, ominous that's a good word. So I'm going to take the f fog, which I currently have layered over the top of the background photo. I'm going to pull it over here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this transparency and I'm going to lower it. Probably, I think that look. Uh, I think that looks good. So it adds a little bit of that smoke to it, a little bit of the, the spooky vibe that I want. And then I'm coming over here and I typed in a rectangle. And what that did is it just entered in this rectangle, as you can see. I'm going to spread it all the way over, make it a little bigger. I'm making like a little background banner thing. I'm going to change its color to white. And then I'm going to go up here to the transparency again. And I'm going to bring it way down. I might even do something like this, bring the edges in. As you guys can see, this isn't a science, right? It's a, I'm trying to figure out what looks good, what doesn't. Okay, so now I'm back to this. I want to change the font of this cursive because I don't like it. I think it looks bad. You can play through. Um, generally, because this font up here is kind of whimsical, you want the second font. Comic Sans, that's what we're going to run with. Um, you want your second font to not be super fancy because your first font was fancy. Um, but my first font isn't super loopy, so I could use a loopy font. All my technical terms here. Oh, that looks awful. Um, I don't particularly want... I mean, that's not awful, I guess kind of cool but not the vibe I'm going for nope I'll go for something a little thinner that could work let's drop it down to like 70 I don't like it Let's see, what do we have? Maybe I do need to go for something super scripty. Um. <laughs> no. I don't 
No. This is probably the worst part of this whole process for me is I could spend hours just going through and picking my fonts and picking all of the things that I I want. What's Edo? It's coming up. Um, that doesn't look terrible. I don't like it. <laughs> Let's do this. I'm going to cheat and go to one of my brands that I have that I know a secondary font that I like. Feb 2nd at 2 p.m. That a little bigger. That'll work. That'll do. All right. So what I'll could do now, if I go in and I remove the, um, if I take the suggestion of the professional and remove the outline, you can then go in and make this little rectangle. Uh, you can make the text pop by making the rectangle a different color. Um, we can make it blue if we wanted to. I think the green would fit with the overall theme pretty well of what we're trying to do. I don't know. I don't like that, though. What if we just went with black? Yeah, I do kind of like that. I think that looks pretty good. And... Then I'm going to go to this position button. Same thing as what we were doing earlier, trying to center it. And then making sure that that is grouped together. So that way when I move it, it all stays where it needs to be. Right? And that right there um, could be a good um, thing that you could post on social media as you're trying to hype up the rules for the game that you just made. Um, something else you could do, right? Like an easy one that I've done in the past is castle, um, right? Something like that looks almost perfect <laughs> without really having to even do a whole lot. Um, I actually do like the black there. What about something? Yeah, that looks, that looks good. Um, so you could, you could play around with it. Essentially, the point of this post is to be able to throw up in multiple different places. This is also what you can do if you're making an event for yourself. Uh, this would be the event header on your Facebook event. Uh, you can throw this everywhere. Just post these two together, uh, the woods and then the, the, the banner there. So I'm trying to think if there's anything else that I would go to back. Why did it do that? I got distracted. Sorry, got distracted, guys. Uh, if there's anything else that I would do in my game walkthrough, can you think of anything, Hearth, that I would, that you would do differently or add or take away? No, I like everything you've done so far. No complaints. <laughs> um, I guess to show just what some of this could look like as well. Um, if you wanted to change any of this up and change out the mechanic. So <clears throat> if we wanted to use the same field, um, we can show just some various options for a game. So say we still stick with the woods on one side and the, um, the open field on the other. If you were wanted to do two teams, you could do an attack and defense game pretty easily, which could be fun. Um, so that one, you could have two of the teams on offense and one of the teams on defense, which could be really fun. Um, and you would have to you would have to build up why the defense would be able to survive, right? Because two v one isn't good. Um, but like if they had dynamite, or if they had two siege weapons, or if they had right, you can kind of 
branch it out uh, further from there um, and make it kind of unique. Uh, you can also, something that um, if the event that you're going to be doing the game at has a theme, uh, you can center your games around those themes. Um, so like, Hearth, what's your favorite theme for any Amgard event you've been to? Hard. Um, <laughs> I know, that's hard, right? Yeah, there's so many. Um, uh, uh, some of the older keeps were a lot better. Mm. I, I like their their themes. They uh, what was it? Um, I had a lot of fun in, in um, the original like, against the giants. Mm, okay, so giants. What would I do for this to be? giants so i could potentially <laughs> you could allow one team the defending team to swing siege if you wanted to um or have give defending team um certain like three pole arms that swing siege and those are like the pole arms of the, that are blessed by the giants you could do that um i'm trying to think of other themes potentially um, if you wanted to do, like, if your, if your game runner wanted you to do more puzzle things, uh, for instance, uh, you could throw those here in the open field. The players have to gather the pieces in the woods, bring them back, assemble them here. Whichever team assembles the puzzle pieces first wins. You have all the puzzle pieces spread throughout the woods so they can go in the woods and fight, but then they can also fight and disrupt each other while their team's trying to put the puzzle together. Um, I, I saw something the other day. Let me see if I can find a photo. It was actually really, really neat. Um, kids, it was a kid's toy, uh, sheeps. And it was, um, it was these little, it was a kid's toy. Yeah, 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 yeah right here. Okay. So, oh, come on. It all goes in the square hole. So, this toy right here. Um, was I think would be super fun for Amp Guard. So each team has a little, uh, like a rectangle, and then you see these little like knobs that go up, and then there are shapes that are spread throughout that have different amounts of holes in them, and you have to place and make these out of like um, the foam mats for um, like what we use for yoga mat type things, like those squares, right? So each rectangle is a full like 18 inches by 18 inches or something like that. And then you cut these shapes out and you have the, you have 40 of them spread around and you have to then put these together like an actual physical puzzle that your players are doing while they are also trying to fight each other is really fun. Uh, the thing with those type of games is you have to be very careful not to add too many things. Um, like if I'm going to add a puzzle in, that's the only unique thing that I'm going to do um, because puzzles are difficult anyway. And I don't want puzzles and nodes and teleportation special rules and a river that you have to walk on your knees through and yada, 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 right? Like if you're going to do a complex puzzle, I say complex, I just showed you a toddler's toy, but you know what I mean? Um, it's complex. It's complex. Um, that way you, you can just make sure that you are um, good to go there and it's not too complicated. Um roaming boss mobs hmm so that's a good point kyle um this is a game a game theory one that some people love and i happen to fall in the camp of i don't particularly like mob or uh, i don't like bosses in my battle games um i think npc monsters are fantastic in um like night quest and in not competitive games but in my competitive games, I don't enjoy NPCs playing monsters because they're it's not like a video game where you're supposed to have, uh, like, or the NPC has perfect AI, doesn't attack one team more than the other, doesn't try harder versus one team or the other. Uh, just as a player, I've never, very rarely do I feel like coming out of an NPC boss in a competitive battle game. Um, feeling good about it or like if there's a neutral monster that's supposed to attack both teams equally they almost never do <laughs> um, agreed 
Now I will. I'll oh, go ahead. I got something. Um, this is a bridge wars a few years ago. There was an NPC monster that could be killed for points. Mm -hmm. And it became that person was not a higher skill person, but a higher skilled fighter on a team farmed that person for game points. Like, yeah. Oh yeah. Hardcore. That was the, it, I remember that year. Yeah. The, if you're going to do NPC monsters, you want to make sure that they're they're they know what they're doing and they understand and don't get overwhelmed when 20 people are hitting them at the same time. Um, and so some newer players really enjoy playing monsters. And if they really want to, I'll let them. Uh, that doesn't bother me too terribly much. Um, but you just got to make sure that they understand what's up, which is why, in my opinion, Night Quest is, is perfect for that type of stuff because you have smaller groups and it's a little bit more controlled. It's not a competitive atmosphere. Um, it tends to work a little better. Now, I really like your idea, Kyle, about roaming, though. I think it could be really fun on a large field at a big Inner Kingdom game to have an NPC whose job is to jog back and forth from one side of the giant field to the other. And they are allowed to try and escape players and they are allowed to try and run around, right? And, and they have to stay within a set limit, but there's, say there's three of them and you have to get all three flags for your team to win. And there's, you know, there's each team has three flags. There's three teams. So there's nine NPCs running away from everybody with the flags and the, whichever team collects their three flags quickest would win. I think that would be a freaking blast. You would just have to make sure your NPCs are equally skilled and understand the rules and, and you know, all of that type of stuff. Hearth, what do you think of a roaming flag gather game? Uh, I like that idea. I, I think it could be fun. I like the idea of multiples, but I don't know. Like, I, I, want, I want more challenge to it than that, because then you know hmm. Bob's carrying X flag, Steve's carrying X flag. I'd rather them all look the same. Mm. That way, if you accidentally kill the same monster over and over again, you're still get, you're, you're either getting nothing or getting the same game item over and over again. When I you gotcha. See what I'm like what what I'm thinking is is that I would give say I have three teams and I have three monsters on each each monster I would give a very visible flag like an actual like two foot by four foot flag that they have on a pole think like samurai pole type thing and their job is to run around the field and not get captured your team is only allowed to interact with your team's colors um, so like team orange team couldn't steal green team's flags. Um, but if an orange team member kills the orange flag in PC, they get that flag. You win by collecting all three of the flags and getting them back to your base. And then the NPCs are given instruction on, you have to stay within heck. You could even do it over a full event site. If you wanted to, if you wanted it to be more, like not just on the battlefield, but like run all over the event site and you have an hour or whatever. Like there could be some fun stuff with that. Were you playing with us yet when they did the site wide um, mm -hmm. assassin game? I did. I was. Yep. That, I remember one uh, all the way back at. Um, shoot. Fallen Rock. And the, everyone drew names, and then you had to go kill that person. Mm -hmm. And then you killed that person, you took their name, and it was a ch basically you chained through everybody. Yep. Sorry, I didn't mean to tangent. No, you're good. No, those games, game modes like that are fun. Like, unique games that you don't see very often are memorable, right? That game was 12 years ago, and you still remember it. So, like, mm -hmm. what makes it memorable? And then how can we go through and duplicate that? And so, like, that's a, that's, a, uh, a, a tool, a diagnostics tool, I guess, uh, that you can think of is if you're designing games, go and make a list of your top 10 favorite games you've ever played in and then list out why each game was fun. And then from there you can say, okay, seven out of my 10 games were fun because they all shared this thing in common. Well, maybe make a game around that thing. If you enjoyed that, you're going to have more, you're going to be more invested in it. You're going to have more fun with it. Um, you could go through and every game's a node game or like for me, for instance, almost all of my favorite games are competitive 
Almost all of my favorite games are smaller fields. Almost all of my favorite games are um, smaller team size, right? So that's, that's how my brain functions because that's how I have fun. Now, there's a notable one. My favorite game I have ever played in was the exact opposite of that. Um, and it was at Keep, and it was a, it was, uh, there were three teams. It was a Settlers of Catan game where there were like 30 nodes, and every two minutes or whatever, whichever team captured the node, each node represented a resource. And then those resources were ran, and each team had one player playing a Catan game in real time that you were the resources that you fought on the field for your team then got to use that resource for the settlers of Catan game. Um, and that one was super fun and that's my favorite game of all time, but that's my outlier on my one to 10, if that makes sense. Um, and so those are useful too, because then you can decide why was this outlier fun? Um, why, what about it made it so unique and memorable compared to my normal games that I enjoy? Um, and you can kind of use that as a starting point to start thinking about what games uh, you want to play. See, I remember that game too, but I remember that game for a completely different reason. <laughs> yeah. That was a fun keep. I think that was Ash who made that, yes. or at least was, auto, was Autocrat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That that game actually earned Ash his walker in the middle. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because he, uh, he threw off a whole fighting company, if I recall. Yes, well, he he threw off one member because they were Cheating. going against the yeah the, the spirit of the game, and the the guy in a pout took his entire company. Yep, I remember that. That was a fun keep. I enjoyed that one. Um, one of the best games I had ever played was that keep, and one of the worst games I had ever played was that keep. And uh, one of the worst games I had ever played it was a militia game, on a very small path, and it was. I don't know, call it a hundred people on a 30 foot wide path. And there was, it was oh. just a straight path up and down in the middle of the path. There are a bunch of logs. Your team won by getting the logs back to your base. And it literally was a lot, like a wall of people, like 15 deep. The first two lines got to fight. The first two people in the line got to fight. When they died, you walked all the way back to spawn and you got in the back of the line again and essentially got to, it was just, it was a hot mess. It was no fun. No one enjoyed it. And so for that one, the game mode would have been a blast in 10 v 10, right? I think it would have been super fun in a 20 v 20 game, but you don't know that you don't know how many people are going to show up. And then when you get to keep where everything is just way larger, um, it's hard to, know how that's going to land. And so that game would have been good with fewer people, but when we had a hundred people on the field, it was one of the worst games I had ever played. So I think a lot of games fall victim to that. Mm -hmm. They didn't properly prepare for what they was going to show up and play that day. Yep. Agreed. But then it can also be on the other side too, um, which is like, I need 20 players for this game to run, but only six showed up. And so now what do I do? And so making your game scalable like this game right here, this Battle of the Woods that we were just talking about, theoretically, 150 people show up. If I have enough Reeves, I'll just keep adding teams. And for every team that I spawn or that I, I add, I'll add another spawn point. And for every maybe five teams, I'll add another Woods spawn point. And you can just run it, right? That scales pretty easily um, as long as you have enough Reeves for it. And so that's something to take in con into consideration also because some of the smaller games like this one, um, you could run this one with, I don't know, 20 on 20 maybe, but much more than that, it wouldn't work well. And so then you have to do multiple rounds and different teams and certain events that's okay, but other events it's not. And so I wouldn't inherently want to run this as like the main day game on Saturday because it might be too small. But if we have multiple rotating teams, cool. Or if I'm running it on Friday night, that would work fine. So just keeping those things in, you know, keeping that stuff in mind um, is, is helpful. I got a question here. Based on earlier comments, do you have any advice for recruiting people to play NPC positions? So a couple, couple of things that I would suggest. Um, if you're going to be running an event um, in general, any event, but specifically if you're running games on the event, 
Um, if we go back to this, I would start posting this, uh, the Battle of the Woods and the rules at least a month out. Um, if it's a hyper competitive game, I would go even further if I can. And what I would do is in my posts, I would say, you know, hey, here's the event page. We're so excited for you to be here. Um, we're, we're looking for six Reeves for this. If you are interested in doing that or being an NPC, like in your post that you're posting uh, regularly on social media, put what you need. And if you start four weeks out and then you're posting once a week go leading up to it, um, then that will, that will help a lot. Um, I wonder... Give me one second here. Let me see if I can find them. Uh, something else that you can do is you can post side content uh, with your, your main stuff. And what I mean by that is I had a battle tournament coming up. I had posted the rules for it. And then I was hyping up the battle tournament leading up to it by posting how many or posting spell lists, essentially, of what people oh, come on. It's not going to, it's not going to work right now. Um, ah, that stinks. Um, it's fine. But essentially, so I had posted, um, here's the game. And then I started posting, it was a 5v5 game. And I started posting ideal team comps that you and your friends could run for that game. So, right, we're going to play a heavy armor. So we're going to run four armor and a, you know, two warriors, a pally, an anti-pally, and a healer. Here's the comp for that team. Boom. In that post, you could say, hey, we're also still looking for Reeves. So then at that point, if you're posting those leading up to your event, you're posting this once a week. And then you're posting shoulder content once a week. And if you do that for a month leading up to your event, that's eight posts right there where you're asking for help. Um, if you, if that doesn't work and you're specifically looking for monsters, uh, what I would do is go to your kingdom page on the orc and then I would come down to, let's see, where did it go? Um, I guess you could start with masters. We'll go class masters. Um, if you come in here, you can look for your monsters down here. Uh, you could, and then directly reach out to these people and say, Hey, I'm running a quest. I really need fill in the blank. Um, would you, I see you're a Paragon monster. I would love if you would, would you be up for, for doing that? And you can specifically reach out to those people. Um, I, between those, those are the, the two ways that I have found success, uh, spam that you need help. And then specifically ask people if that still doesn't work. Um, I hope that that, that helps, man. All right. I think that that is a good place to wrap up um, the video. I will, I'll leave this up here just for a minute. If anybody has any questions, feel free to um, type it in here while I kind of close up. Uh, thank you for everybody who has been watching uh, this, who participated in the live stream. Thank you, Hearth, for participating and being my autocrat. You are a great autocrat tonight. <laughs> you don't gotta lie to me <laughs> yeah no you did great fantastic fantastic um if you all have any questions feel free drop those down in the comments below uh would love to get feedback on this if you have any other ideas for these like friday night live type classes that you'd like to see uh drop those down there as well so like and subscribe if you haven't already um one thing i will show you that i have started uh, this last couple of weeks, uh, I have moved into a website, a, a blog called AroundTheFireMedia.net. Uh, feel free, go and check it out. Uh, writing a lot of content on Renaissance fairs and LARPing mainly. Um, doing, you know, some just fun content, top five LARP movies of all time, Renaissance festival ideas, but then also um, some of my videos that I've done that have been successful, making written content around that as well. Um, so if this is something that you're interested in, if you're someone who enjoys uh, reading and likes the websites and articles, um, feel free, go check that out. Again, that is aroundthefiremedia.net. Um, my goal is two articles a week, one about Ren Fairs, one about LARPing uh, for the foreseeable future, and we'll see how it goes. So yeah, there's that. Thank you all for being here. 
I appreciate you so much. Uh, my name is St. Godric. Hearth has joined us today. Uh, we will see you next time. Peace. All right. Not bad, not bad. Stop streaming. And...